Hey guys, what's up? By uh, Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is finally that Town Hall 11 base building video everyone's been asking for. It's been a while since we've done the Town Hall 12 one, but here we are. I have two guests here to help me out. I'll introduce them in just a moment. First, a shout out to my Patreon. If you want your own custom war base each month, you can sign up. Links in the description below. Um, it's a good way to get some high-level bases if you don't want to have to build them yourself. Uh, so check that out if you're interested. But let's get into the topic of this video, Town Hall 11 base building. Both guests, uh, members of One Hive Genesis. First, uh, King James, thanks for coming on. No problem. It's great to have you here. And then we also have Miller Time, another Town Hall 11. Thanks for being here. Yo, yo, for sure. All right. Um, <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started, though. Uh, we're going to go through basically all the fundamental stuff at Town Hall 11, everything uh, that you guys need to know, just like we did in our Town Hall 12 video. You can check that out um, if you're a Town Hall 12 and just seeing this now. And we'll also do Town Hall 9, Town Hall 10 in the future, hopefully. But um, we have one base up on the screen here. Uh, we can all draw on it. And uh, we're going to just talk about how it's set up, why it's set up. You'll notice this is a tier one, meaning it's a, a new Town Hall 11, not maxed, which changes things a little bit. We'll also take a look at a maxed Town Hall 11 a little bit later. Um, but to start, I'll go ahead and ask Miller time. This is his base here. Um, at Town Hall 11 in general, what is it you're trying to defend in like a CWL type war or any war where you have Town Hall 10s, 11s, and 12s? What's the main goal as a defender? Um, so at tier one, I try to just defend a witch spam and a lalo spam. Um, basically, I just don't want somebody to drag their finger across the screen and take no skill to triple. Okay, and, and you're defending uh, against three stars, I assume? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, I mean, with the Grand Warden, the Wall Wrecker, you don't want people being able to drop everything on one side and then just having them spam the spells for sure. Um, so what, what would you say are the common army comps? Is it Laloon, witches that people are typically using? Yeah, I think my tier one gets hit most of the time fresh with just a 10, 10, 15, um, with the, the giants, witches and bowlers. Okay. And, and what would you say are the components of a base that you use to defend that yep so i try to get at least one edge of the witches to basically path out oh i'm erasing Jeez. oh <laughs> no worries yeah just hit undo. so ideally when you send one one set of witches down on this side i want them to path out and stay away from kind of coming down in here so all of this this splash and the the tesla can kind of pick those troops off and then if you're going to wreck her, I want it basically to get hung up as long as possible without breaking through a bunch of walls. Um, right. So what you can't see on this one is there's a Tesla at 12 to try and mess with the funnel as well on a spam hit. Um, so basically just slowing down that funnel on the top side. So, right, and let me just, to make this a little more clear for the viewers, when you have the town hall here, um, we'll talk about the town hall a little bit later, but people are going to try to use the wall wrecker from the opposite side because that way they don't have to bring two, three jump spells. Um, so you have the witches going on each side here and here, and like he said, you have this where the witches come in, they get targeted by this multi, by the wizard tower, and then over here as well, um, the single inferno is kind of hard to get because the, uh, the kill squad probably won't go in that compartment. Um, so both both sides, mainly this side though, are very difficult to use witches on. Um, let me bring King James in here. In terms of uh, Laloon, what, what types of components are you going to have in a base to try to defend the Lalo spam where it's like Sui heroes and then just roll Lalo through the base? Yeah, I think at tier one, that probably would be the hardest uh, attack to stop. Would be a Sui Lalo. Um, you know, you definitely don't want to have a Hound in the CC if you're giving up a lot of ARDs. Um, you know, I think this base might be susceptible to a Sui Lalo, um, but I mean, for something like this, 
you know, I think they're going to bring a kill squad in on this base. You see where the town hall is. You want to probably bring a wrecker in around nine o'clock side, get a couple ARDs. Um, you can most likely even get a get the queen on the tier one and probably even the eagle. Um, so, you know, he probably probably ran some sort of hound in the sea to prevent that type of attack. But I mean, Sui Lalo with ARDs all on one side will definitely throw off your path. And even the multi, Sui Lalo it straight from 12th degree. Um, right. But yeah, I, I think that's probably about it. Anything you would add to that, Miller? Anything else nope. about Sui Lalo? No, uh. I think. Yeah, I mean, you can't defend everything at tier one. So the idea is really just to get that first defense to make him waste a hit. Right, and you have the troll Teslas, uh, which is very, I think, useful for Town Hall 11s these days who are getting hit fresh by other Town Hall 11s, especially Tier 1s. Um, but yeah, like, like we said, all the air defenses on one side, and then over here we have Wizard Towers, Expos. Uh, this is also a tough compartment with the Multi Inferno. Uh, and the Sweepers are very central as well. So that um, made a little smiley face there, but... <laughs> uh, that's gonna make it difficult having all the air defenses offset. Now you open up maybe electro dragons to some extent, but that's really not as much of a concern at Town Hall 11, I would say. The main thing is that Lalo, um, which is Lalo, those are the two you want to defend against. So make the flanks hard here and here um, with your, you know, opposite your Town Hall. And then also th put the air defenses away from like these areas that are very anti Lalo for sure. Yeah, and I think even if you suey, you know, whether it be the ARDs down here at six or you try to suey maybe this one with the king queen, there's still a lot of splash damage that are most likely not going to be covered by the hounds. You're going to have a lot of these wizard towers just pounding on your loons because the hounds are going to go straight to those other ARDs right across the base. So I think that would make it pretty tough as well. For sure. Um, so, kind of generally speaking, we talked in the Town Hall 12 video about keeping the Town Hall, the Eagle, the Queen, uh, those like three important things separate from each other. So how does that like translate to Town Hall 11? Are we going to put the Eagle central, like kind of in this space? Um, do we put the single Inferno on the opposite side of the Town Hall? Um, can one of you guys talk a little bit about the arrangement of like, I'd say like these five important things right here? In Town Hall 11. Yeah, I, I can talk about it from a Lalo perspective. And this base might not be the best example of it, Tier 1. Um, but one of the things that I like to keep away from each other, especially from a, a small kill squad Lalo attack, is you don't want to have you have the Inferno at 9. You don't want to give up an Inferno, um, one or two air defenses, a Queen, and an Eagle um, all on a kill squad. You know, and so this base looks a little susceptible to that but it also is a tier one um so it probably as a hound in the dc what might make it a little harder to to get all of that um but i'd like to keep you know i don't want to clump up my air defenses with an inferno and keep it by an eagle so i'd like to keep that stuff separate so you can get all of that on a kill squad yeah i think that's a good point um one thing i've noticed is you want to have generally speaking single infernos um, kind of right where the wall wreckers coming, like force them to freeze. So you have it opposite yep. your town hall. Then you can put the multis more on the back end. So people aren't going to have the benefit of a wall wrecker push getting your multi inferno. Um, but yeah, I, I think generally speaking, you know, these things you want to keep separate and out of like one big kill squad push. Um, anything you would add to that, Miller? Nope. Okay, perfect. Um, let's talk a little bit before we move on from this base. Uh, I'll go ahead and clear the mark up here about uh, ground attacks like spring traps. Um, maybe you can talk uh, a little bit about your base here. How are the spring traps set up, giant bombs, in terms of defending like hogs? Um, so actually the, the spring traps and the bombs and stuff on, well, not the spring traps, the bombs on this base are really set up to stop a kill squad from getting all of the sweepers um, for a Lalo setup. Uh -huh. So when this 
when this base was initially run a few weeks ago the multi in the back was a single it was kind of before you saw the shift to the back end multi inferno um so the bomb placement is truly all for keeping the air defenses or the, sw the sweepers alive um, to slow up the Lalo. Gotcha. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. How about the spring traps? Yeah, they're just, um, you know, placed in between the defenses. So that way, if somebody did hit it with hogs, which you don't see a lot fresh on a tier one, um, there's just no reason really to do that, at, mm -hmm. at least that I've seen. Um Obviously, you try to get as many as you can as quick as you can, but yeah. it's, tough. it's tough to plan for that when, when you're building these bases and Lalo and witches are smashing it. You're trying to figure that out. So, right. Yeah, and I think I got one thing to add to that. I think one thing that's really nice about this base and, and Hogs is he has the spring traps set up pretty far away um, from his kill squad. So, see these over here at six and over here at 12, you're going to be hitting all hogs those aren't going to be touched by any golem bowlers like that so it seems like a majority of his traps are, are kind of set up on spots that hogs will be passing throughout the base which is a big thing for hogs at any tier yeah i agree because looking at this base um you can know wherever you put your town hall you're gonna have probably a wall record push going opposite um if it's like a ground attack or even like a hybrid with lalo <laughs> because um, they want to get the Inferno for sure. So you can kind of predict these areas are not going to be touched as much by kill squads. So good place to put the spring traps. Um, I guess kind of to summarize here at tier one, earlier Town Hall 11s, not to say this doesn't apply to other 11s, but the important things are defend against the Lalo. Um, we'll talk about miners maybe on the next base, but the main thing is try to... Um, to make it as difficult as possible for them to use Laloon um, on your base and um, having offset air defenses is great as well as the big kill squad pushes like the spam witches where you have witches on each side then like the wall wrecker and bowlers up the middle um, those are the two things you want to defend against as your number one priority um, so anyway that all being said we'll go ahead and cut away to our next town hall 11 base Okay, so we have the next base up on the screen here, uh, once again in Twidla. Now, t we have this annoying remove button, but I guess we'll have to deal with it um, in the screenshot. Um, this is King Jeffrey's base. This is a maxed uh, Town Hall 11. When we say Tier 1, for those of you who don't know, that's basically a new Town Hall 11 uh, with lower level defenses, but this one is completely maxed out, and um, we'll talk a little bit more about kind of how this base is set up and how that applies in general. So, um, King Jeffrey, I'll let you, uh, or am I saying King Jeffrey? King, King James, right? Yep, King Sorry. James, yep. All right, um, <laughs> how, how is this base uh, set up in general? Can you talk a little bit just about the basic components yep. of it, then we'll get more specific. Yeah, at Town Hall 11, I think, you know, you have to decide, you know, what attack strategies you want to prevent. Um, for me, I always, start with the most simple one and that's um, bitch um, and you know for bitch this base is set up really well to defend it um, it actually passed multiple FC's against it I think I tried it 30 to 35 times really couldn't get it more than one or two times and I think one of the big things with defending bitch is the town hall location and the inferno tower placement so as you can see you know the obvious bitch location for this base is a 9 to 9 to 12 starting point and one of the big things with this is when you drop the wall wrecker, um, you're not going to be able to open up two Inferno compartments. Um, so if you were to drop it around here, you would pass all the way through here, leaving open this single compartment that you would have to deal with later. Um, and it just creates some, some havoc. And then also some of the outside bombs. Um, I believe we have this bomb out here that really with the, with the um, Tesla right there, stops the witches um, from rolling down on the flank. That's another big thing is, you know, putting some traps on the outside. Um, I believe the version I test, tested also had a giant bomb here, um, which killed the whole flank going down the nine to six side. So I would say probably town hall placement and um, outside trap placement is the biggest thing with preventing bitch. And then also the other thing that I look at defending is Lalo. 
because that's really heavily used. Um, I, I think in the CWL wars, it's also one of my favorite strategies to use. Mm-hmm. And this base is set up really well because you don't give up a lot of value. On um, an entry point for, for Lalo on this type of base with that town hall location is going to be really tough. Um, if you wanted to enter you know, from the six to nine side with a kill squad, you're not going to get much value. You might get a Inferno Tower and you know an Eagle. Um, leaving up, you know, three to four air defenses to deal with, and possibly the queen. Um, if you enter, you know, from the nine to twelve side, you'll get some nice value with the wizard towers, but you're still going to be leaving up, you know, multiple air Ds, probably even a multi inferno, which makes it very tough. So I always try to decide like what two to three strategies I want to defend, and then go from there with a you know, different placement on you know some of my top defense. Gotcha. So um, one thing to kind of add to that is looking at this base, draw a line from your town hall to each inferno, and those should be different lines, meaning you don't want your infernos to be lined up, like if they were all in like one line like that, because then they're just going to get pushed by one single kill squad. So having them at different angles, like like you said, the town hall placement so important. Um, and basically, that's the perspective you should look at your base from, is on each like wall record entry angle are you giving up too much lalo value um too much value to maybe some other attack like hogs and in this space um as you kind of were talking about there's a nice spread where you have the air defenses kind of away you have the eagle away um so all they're really going to be able to get is maybe a single inferno and depending on the angle just some like regular defenses but a lot of those key defenses are put back Right. I mean, if you wanted to go ahead and try to get some of these key de- defenses from three to six, you're not really going to be able to use your wall record because of that town all over. And yes, you could bring a blimp, but you're also not going to get a big push then. If you don't bring your wall record, kill squad, you're not going to get any inferno. You're not going to queen. You're going to leave those two air defenses up. Um, so, you know, you can bring a small kill squad, but you really can't from that age. I think this base defended, you know, one to two times pretty well against DLZ when they tried to use a small kill squad in Lalo um, before it was Queen Walk Minor. Right, and we'll take a look at a replay in just a moment. Um, I want to touch on Miners as well, and I know that's a tricky thing because it's like, it's not the most simple for defending uh, as maybe Laloon or, or Witches are, but... Um, I'll bring Miller in. Do you have any comments, maybe not necessarily just for this base, but in general, uh, what do you want to try to put in your base to defend against miners? Dragons in a Town Hall 12 plant castle. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's it's getting tougher and tougher, especially now that you've seen the Queen Walks kind of come back, especially now that we're, I mean, a, I know One Hive Genesis, DLC, all of the major clans are using the multi Inferno on the back end now. So it, it opens it up to a lot of walks and charge capability, but then you run into time and different issues. So it just goes back to passing and how you use your space and your splash damage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I think Miller is right. I also think one other uh, thing with the, the minor is, you know, not letting the queen be able to walk down one flank, healers on her. So a lot of times, and I, and I, what was the downfall for this base it's just letting that that queen walk down one side of the base and then the king down the other side of the base and then a hound in the cc i mean right there you know when somebody sees a hound pop up that you your queen can walk with four to five healers on her down one full side of the base um you're you're definitely opening yourself up to a uh, queen walk minor attack yeah um it's it's definitely tough to defend uh from from what i've seen some of the key things are keeping your base uh, a little bit more segmented. So this base, you know, it's definitely solid against miners. Like you said, there, there might be some uh, weak points, but if you can keep like a single inferno, uh, like maybe off to the side and also have it so there's like some empty space, maybe the miners won't path to it if they come through like this. Um, if you can keep air defenses, uh, they are still not reachable by the queen, but also a little bit out of that. Um, if they're like over here and there's some space behind them, if you can kind of keep these things that compromise the king and the queen, 
especially queen walks on the outside, uh, but also away from the minors, that's important. But yeah, a lot of it is just um, how, how does the pathing in your base work? Where do you put your splash damage? Um, do you want to like, how would you put giant bombs for defending miners? Or is it more important just to put them on the outside for defending like witches or hogs? Um, you know, at, at this point, uh, you know, two weeks ago, I would have said put them on the outside to defend, um, you know, the bull witch attack because it was you know pretty widely used. But, you know, to be honest, in some of the higher level wars we're facing, you know, the top clans, it's not very often you see them using a, a, a straight bitch attack anymore. Now I'm seeing a lot of uh, Queen Walk Miners. So I would say if you plan on running a Howl Moon, um, then you definitely want to start keeping your giant bomb um, maybe in some of the Inferno Tower compartments and, and by some of the wizards. And also think about putting some belly traps on the ground. So I think a lot of it depends on you know, what CC you're running. I mean, if you're running you know, a dragon and maybe a few loons or something like that to stop the miners, you might be able to get away with keeping a couple bombs on the outside. If you're running a hollow loon, I think you kind of have to set your base up to, to defend um, those miners. Yeah, it's a trade-off because the Hound Loon, any type of Hound CC is going to make it very tough for a kill squad push through the base because it's going to hold up the queen. Um, and then if you bring... But the problem with that is obviously the miners. Then people just drop a poison in the middle to kill the loon. Heroes on each side, the Hound doesn't hurt the miners. Um, so then you can switch and bring a big dragon or Valk's baby dragon or even like a golem or something like that to kind of screw up the miners. Golem is actually interesting. I've been trying, I've been thinking about running that. Um, but if you switch up your CC, then you're opening yourself up again to like Sui, Lalo, and kill squad pushes. Uh, so you kind of have to balance that out. You know, how's your base set up? What's worth bringing in the CC um, based on that? So yeah. Um, anything else you guys want to add to this base or anything in general? Um, yeah, so I think one thing that kind of gets overlooked a lot when you're building, or well, when a lot of people are building, are these empty kind of negative spaces. So when you guys were talking about like your kill squad entries and stuff, right? No matter where, no matter where you come in here, you only get one building of value. So kind of just just at that aspect where. Yeah, it, it's appeasing to come in on this nine to six side with a witch attack or a, kill, a type of kill squad, but he uses this negative space here to protect the eagle, which makes it look way more appetizing than it actually is. Mm -hmm, that's a good point, yeah. Um, because what the negative space does, it separates things off, sometimes for better, sometimes for worse, because um, it, it can protect the kill squad a little bit, but in this case... Uh, building like the eagle people definitely want to be getting and as you as you kind of drew here with these arrows it's it's a difficult push to get that eagle and it also screws up minor pathing a little i think if you have some of these negative spaces i guess it can help too but if the miners have to go through negative space to something else they can kind of group up or kind of split in a weird way yeah and it's you know it's it's like we said right it's a give or take um but this, I mean, like I said, these these colored in green spots now they protect they protect a huge portion of the back end of the base from a bunch of different angles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I think it also, you know, when we were testing it against Lalo, um, when people were dropping their heroes from you know, this side, taking out an air D or two, they were having a lot of trouble with, um, you know getting to the eagle with the Sui Lalo in time, pounding, pounding, passing around these open areas. Um, and then also all of these towers where you're going to be dropping your hounds, you know, from this side, um, you know, the hounds blow right past those whiz towers sometimes, even if you get the haste down quick, it's any, a lot of problems. Yeah, yeah I, I like the sweeper position as well here. It's um, it's maybe overlooked sometimes, but these are you have to really get far into the base to get these sweepers, and they're really covering um, a lot of value here with what they can reach. 
Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, perfect. Any, any other final comments here? We have a replay we'll take a look at in just a sec. Nope. Nope, nothing for me. All right, perfect. So um, as we kind of hinted at before, this base was used in the uh, DLZ war. Um, we'll take a look at one replay on it. I think it was ultimately tripled by miners, but before that, um, uh, we, I was able to capture one uh, solid replay on this base uh, for La Loon. So we'll go ahead and take yeah. a look at that. And I will say this, you know, looking back at it, I probably would not have found it, and that should have helped out with it. Attack. but that probably would have been the only thing that I changed yeah I mean once you see like your base getting destroyed by miners it's always like why did I run that hound <laughs> definitely um, yeah uh, okay let's go ahead and take a look at the replay alright so here we go with the replay um, this was the attack on King James's base and it was a Lalo attempt so I'll let him kind of take over here and talk through what happened Yep. So, you know, as you can see, it's kind of what we talked about earlier, where one of the spots that somebody would probably try to bring a small kill squad. So as you can see, he doesn't have any, you know, real giants with them, no golems. He's going to bring his um, king, queen in there uh, with the wrecker. So I believe he'll probably drop the queen or the king now. Um, looks like he already knows that it was a hound loon city. So he's just going to do a small push and try to get the, the whist towers and the queen and the CC. So I believe he does get everything here. Um, yeah. But because the base is set up um, with that multi inferno tower, I'm going to try to allow low 12 to 3. Um, but that multi and the air traps that I have from that angle are just going to roast loon. We'll see, yeah, that multi really does some work on the loons because the pathing into it is very tough. There's no, like, immediate pathing into it. Right, and, you know, that sweeper, you know, as you mentioned earlier, is so deep in the base um, that he's not going to be able to even make a funnel on the 12 o'clock side to get anything, anything going here. Um, and so that's why, you know, that's one of the things I said is I, I tried really hard to prevent any type of kill squad to get any value um, I'm um, here to some sort of like Sui Lalo or um, a hog attack. Yeah, yeah, I think the key here was um, this couldn't get the sweepers, uh, has all the ADs and multi inferno, and the multi inferno is very tough uh, if there's not good pathing into it because it'll just roast those balloons. Um, so anyway, that will wrap up this replay, and I think it kind of shows the strength of this base, so hopefully you guys can take some something away from that. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, anything else you guys want to add as we wrap up here? Any shout-outs or anything? Um, nope. No shout-outs on my end. Okay. Uh, I thought I'd give you guys one more chance if you wanted to, but... Uh, that is it, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Um, big thank you to Miller Time and King James for coming on. Uh, it's been a great uh, video. I've got a lot of tips, and hopefully you guys can make some Town Hall 11 bases now. Um, we will try to do a Town Hall 9, Town Hall 10, maybe even like a Town Hall 8 or a Town Hall 7. Who knows how long this will go for. Um, but the next one will be a Town Hall 10, so I'll get working on that. Um, once again... Uh, Patreon link in the description below if you're interested and um, that is pretty much it thanks for watching been a long video but thanks for sticking through it I'll see you guys later Bisectatron King James and Miller time out peace